Inside the LRRP, Deadly Warriors of the Vietnam War. Greetings to you all. In today's video, we'll be talking about the Long Range Reconnaissance Patrol, or LRRP, or as some like to call them, the Long Range Surveillance Detachment, or LRSD. This army regiment had a short existence, but with a very clear and effective purpose in the Vietnam War. What is the LRRP? LRRP is a well-armed, well-educated, small and strong recon team that dives deep into the enemy territory. It's not like regular scouts used in the French and Indian War in the 18th century, or those that ride on a horse in front of the army only to see the enemy and die to an arrow. Scouting is as old, or maybe even older than warfare, but the modern specialized scouting units weren't used before World War I, most notably the British SAS. But it's the U.S. Army that uses LRRP the most. Even though the Brits started and developed the technique, the Americans edisoned it as their own. They even used Robert Rogers' 28 Rules of Ranging as the foundation of every U.S. Army long-range reconnaissance patrol unit. How the LRRPs operated in Vietnam There were no units in Vietnam like the LRRPs. In fact, there were no units like the LRRPs, period. If you look through history for a similar type of unit, you probably have to go back to the American Revolution and the Civil War to find small units invading deep into the enemy territory. The biggest problem was that inexperienced soldiers were not prepared to fight a guerrilla war and there was no time for extensive training. Troops were taught to fight big, static battles like in World War II, and if they had not developed the LRRP, the war would have turned out differently. Luckily, the veteran army commanders figured out that to fight this war, they needed to put together small, highly mobile reaction forces. Small units are much better equipped to secure information and escape the dense vegetation than large seek-and-destroy operations. Colonel David Hackworth helped to organize two volunteer platoons they called Delta Teams. And after their success, General William Westmoreland ordered the development of a comprehensive long-range patrol program in South Vietnam. These patrols were to consist of specially trained personnel capable of performing recon, surveillance, and target acquisition. Put simply, track them, find them, and kill them. There were only 13 independently operating LRRP units in Vietnam, with no central command and control structure. They were dependent on whichever command center issued the orders. Nobody knew what exactly to do, but by putting experienced soldiers in every group of grasshoppers, it somehow worked out. Necessity brings out the best in soldiers. Companies E and H The 1st Cavalry Division is one of, if not the most, prestigious and accomplished divisions in the U.S. Army. They've served in almost every war in the 20th century. But they're only human, so of course they need support from other divisions. This is where the LRRP comes in. During the Vietnam War in 1966, headquarters gave Captain James, an officer from the Special Forces, and Ranger Staff Sergeant Ronald Christopher a difficult task. They were to handpick the people who were trained to become a long-range reconnaissance patrol detachment of the 1st Cavalry Division. Similar units were already successful in Germany and Italy with Captain James in command, so they had trust in him to do the job properly. After months of getting to know the terrain, tactics, people, and the enemy military, the LRRP Detachment G2 of the 1st Cavalry Division became operational on January 1, 1967, with 120 men on active duty. The given name and formation of G2 Detachment existed for less than a year, on December 20th, 1967, they were renamed Company E, and on February 1st, 1969, Company E was turned into Company H. So don't get confused with different names, those were the same people on the same missions. During the initial years, they mostly supported other divisions, most notably the 3rd Marine Division, during the Operation Jeb Stewart, in the siege of Kaesan Combat Base, and later in clearing the provinces on the coast with the assistance of the infantry. Tet Offensive The Tet Offensive was one of the largest battles of the Vietnam War. On January the 30th, 1968, 
the Viet Cong army launched a giant attack against the Allied forces. It was actually a series of smaller surprise attacks directed towards control centers in South Vietnam in an attempt to thin the defending army. The attack started on a Vietnamese holiday when many of the officers were on leave, so it caused a massive upheaval. The attacks scaled up to be more than 80,000 troops invading over 100 cities, including the main capitals and civilian and military control centers. Viet Cong tacticians hoped they would start an uprising and a political rebellion, not only in Vietnam but in the U.S. as well, because the Vietnam War was as political as it was a war endeavor. The attack was not successful for the Viet Cong on the battlefront, but it was very effective as a political wake-up call for the American public to start protesting against the war. On the battlefront, Company E was essential for the Allied defense. While the 1st Cavalry Division was busy cutting off the reinforcements of the five enemy battalions up north, Company E had to single-handedly defend Quang Tri because the enemy cut off the Allied reinforcements with 82mm mortars and 75mm recoilless rifles. After two days of constant fighting, Company E emerged victorious. The victory was largely due to having the LZ Betty, a 45-foot-tall water tower which they used as a reconnaissance and an attack point for the mortars. This was the most decisive battle in the Tet Offensive. It ruined the morale of the Viet Cong army leaders, and this defeat meant they had no chance of further progress. It cut off all possible supply lines towards the south. Operation Delaware Victory in the Tet Offensive meant that Allies had to act fast before the Viet Cong had any chance to consolidate. On 19th of April 1968, U.S. troops alongside the Army of the Republic of Vietnam entered the A. Sao Valley. It was a vital point for the Viet Cong as it moved military supplies from the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Think of it as a modern Thermopylae where Leonidas stood with his 300 men. This was the largest Allied operation of the whole war, with 20,000 men and 450 helicopters invading the area. The Viet Cong Army had the area fortified, though, with radar-controlled 37mm anti-aircraft cannons, rapid-firing twin-barreled 23mm cannons, and many 12.7mm heavy machine guns to contribute to their air defenses. This battle wasn't a walk in the park. Even though they had lost over 40,000 men in the Tet Offensive and the battle at Khe San, the Viet Cong still had the means to initiate a battle. As there were no modern means of communication, Company E had to take control of Signal Hill. This strategic location was at the peak of a dense mountain. It was ideal as a communication and fire support center. While most of the troops were in slow and tactical battles, Company E had the upper hand in launching a surprise attack by rappelling down from six helicopters to seize control of the hill and set up an Allied communication control base. This proved to be a very effective move, as it cut down the enemy comms, as well as set up the Allied ones. After the Vietnam War The 1st Cavalry Division suffered the most casualties in Vietnam, and Company E was in all of the largest battles, proving to be the X factor every time. As the Vietnam War ended, they were repurposed as Company H of the 75th Infantry. This regiment stayed under this name in the latter years and went on to fight in Cambodia during the 1970s. This is where the last heroes from Company H of Vietnam, Sergeant Osborne and Corporal Maurer, died. They were on a recon mission tasked with bomb damage control and were ambushed with rocket attacks. Company H was deactivated a month later as the last rangers of Vietnam lost their lives. To this day, it still holds the record for the longest continuous combat engagement out of all the Ranger regiments in the U.S. Army. In 1974, the colors and lineage of Company H were passed on to the 2nd Ranger Battalion of the 75th Ranger Regiment. In the movies The movie Platoon from 1986 is possibly the most accurate military movie ever. Oliver Stone, the writer and director of this movie, served in the Vietnam War and was eventually placed in the 1st Cavalry Division and later in Company E. He based his movie on his experiences in the war, the internal and external struggles he and his comrades had to power through to survive and emerge victorious. I wouldn't like to spoil the movie for you as it is fantastic.
It features Tom Berenger, William Dafoe, and Charlie Sheen. Out of 23 awards, it was nominated for, it won 18, four of which were Oscars. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, ring that bell so you don't miss any of our future uploads. If you like this type of video and want more, make sure to let us know in the comments below. Until the next time.